Now then YouTube, I'm the Tothman, and welcome back to some th more Thorncraft 4.2 and Britannia Unite. Well guys, I've got some news for you on the th uh, Thorncraft front and 4.2 and when it's going to be released to the public. I think it's going to be soon, according to this video, right? I could be totally wrong by that and something could go seriously wrong and some, you know, all kinds of stuff can happen. But I think it might be soon. That's all I'm saying. I think it might be soon. Um... Other than that, guys, I know that a few people have been saying this is like a Thorncraft playthrough with a tiny little bit of Batania in there. And that's true. You know, at the moment, that's what it's been. I have been concentrating more on Thorncraft because I think that's what people wanted to see. You know, the, the 4.2, the new stuff that's in that, uh, which I still haven't got fully to yet. Um... I will be getting to that, of course, as we go through the series, but I do want to step into Batania a little bit more in today's episode. So let's go inside here, because I want... Oh, and I've forgotten the seeds, of course, because I put the seeds back in there. I do want to go to a Thorncraft dungeon at some stage as well, but today is all about Batania. Let's go ahead and grab some seeds. Brilliant. I'm going to need a little bit more than that. Phantasmal. Let me just go ahead and turn my headset down here, because that's like really, really loud. I do apologise if it's loud to you guys. So let's go over into here and get to work. Because we need a red mana petal, which I just so happen to have right here. We need a brown mana petal, a red normal one, and a brown normal one. And I also need a light grey one. And then of course, right at the end there, some seeds. So let's pop them into there. And that gives us an ender flame. Only the one, and I do want to get another one, but I'll do that one off camera for you guys, so you don't have to sit there and watch me do the same thing over again. Uh, I will also go ahead and put that into there. Like that. The ender flame then. As you will probably know from a previous episode, the ender flame works off of combustible items. Uh, in other words, coal and stuff like that. Uh, so, I want to actually plant the guy right over here. And again, I want to get a few of these, not just Ender Flames, but other ones as well that I can put in amongst this one and uh, and just get a load of stuff. Meaning, I need one mana spreader, I need another mana pool, um, and then I... Do I want another mana pool, actually, and another mana spreader? So that I can meet them up in the middle, like I said I was going to do, like I said I was actually going to plan on doing. I think I will go ahead and do that, guys. Some people have given me suggestions on this hydrangeas, or hydrangeas, or whatever you want to pronounce them. Um, it really doesn't matter which. Let me get up and grab that. It doesn't need to be there. I like it the way it is, in all fairness. I could drop it down so it's flush with the floor. That's very true, and that's something I possibly could go ahead and do. But it'll look a bit strange having the flower just stuck in the floor. Um, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do on that front just yet. However, let me go ahead and make myself two... No, hang on a minute. I need a mana spreader for the top there, and I need a, I need three mana spreaders uh, and two mana pools. I think, I think. Um, or do I? Can I just like? Hmm. I don't know if I want to back it up. You see, though. I'll be back, guys. Anyway, when I've got things sorted. Okay guys, I am back. Now I've created the mana spreaders and I've also created some more mana pools. However, things have changed and uh, you'll probably see this in a new spotlight video at some stage of what I'm going to do. Now I did have this little guy over here. Uh, this is just a normal mana pool. A normal mana pool, inside there is quite a bit of mana. I've got to say, I've got all of those flowers in there. We've got the hydrangeas all firing every bit of mana into here. The diluted mana pools are brand new. Now, I'm actually going to pop one right there. No, I'm not at all. I lie. I'm going to pop one right there, because that'll be right in the middle. And I'm also going to go ahead and pop one right... No, I'm not, actually. What am I doing? What am I doing? I need to change these diluted mana pools. These only hold a small amount of mana. In fact, it's going to be at night time, so I'll go ahead... No, it's not. What am I doing? Uh, they only hold a small amount of mana. If I go ahead and put one down on the floor and shift right click it with the uh, with the book you can see the mana pool simply put is a storage of mana blah 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 you know all this kind of stuff um, comes in two varieties this is this is new this is in the newer version of Britannia a weaker diluted variety which only stores a very small amount of mana and isn't able to infuse items and a normal variety which can store as much as a hundred times more than the diluted one and can infuse items Whenever mana pool is referred to elsewhere for scale, it refers to a normal one. 
So you can use the diluted mana pool. And to get a normal one, you simply put a diluted mana pool inside, the di in inside a diluted mana pool with mana in it, and you'll get a mana pool. So as you can see here. Now, apparently, this 10 to 1 ratio and 1 to 1 ratio, um, because it's 1 pixel, because it's 1 pixel, apparently, if you have it to a 10 to 1 ratio, it just gives you a, a good, like, decent, a, a decent visual representation of what exactly, how much mana you are using. I've been able to create a mana diamond for a long time, apparently. So let's change these into normal mana pools. I don't want a diluted mana pool, guys. I don't want anything of the sort. So that's now in the middle, which is phantasmal. And then underneath right here is where the other one is going to be. So let's tell that to shoot all the stuff down there, which it is, which is great. Oh, it must just deselect itself now. Brilliant. All right, so I've got two mana spreaders left. I'm going to put one there. No, I'm not. I'm going to put one there, and I'm going to put one on the inside of that one as well. Can I do that? Yeah. Of course I can. And one there. And they should all converge on this mana pool right here. Every single bit of mana that comes from both of these farms will end up in this one pool. I, I, who knows, guys? This might move at some stage, or I might have it firing somewhere else. I do need to have it get going somewhere else anyway in the future for uh, some of the builds and some of the stuff that you can actually go ahead and do. I don't even know what time of day it is, so it's really difficult to work out. Uh, but all of the mana will now end up in here. It will, of course, get sucked out of this mana pool and end up over here. But, guys, let's go ahead and I didn't manage to grab one. I'm going to go and get some coal. So I can show you guys exactly what this does. Nope, wrong one. That one. There we go. 13 pieces of coal will do quite nicely. Now let's go up and have a look at the ender flame and what this actually does. Onto this one here. You can see nothing's... Hang on a minute, what's going on here? Why are you... No. No, 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 no. That's not what you're meant to do. There we go. Right. Now it's getting dark. Now I'm going to have to go home and sleep. And then in the morning we can figure out exactly how this ender flame works. And see where we go from there. Just how much mana will this ender flame create? That's what the question is, guys. That's what the question is. You can, of course, you can dig a little hole and put lava down and it will consume the source block of lava. Um... It just, you can't shove a, a, a lava bucket down because it just, it won't work like that. As you will probably remember from a previous, uh, a previous episode. There we go. That's no longer selected, I don't think. Right. Okay. So I can do that now without it turning around. Brilliant. Um, as you can see, the ender flame has absolutely nothing in it. If I go ahead and put a cold piece of coal down, it will consume the coal. And as you can see, these little particle effects are coming out, and it's obviously going straight into this mana spreader. But look at the amount of mana that's actually going in there. Quite a, quite a speed, I've got to say. Let's put a couple of pieces over there then, and let it just uh, consume these pieces. So for as long as these little particle effects are going, it means that it's not going to consume another piece of coal. Well, that's actually doing a good job, actually. Be nice to have maybe a dropper set up. How how much time would it take for this ender flame to actually run through a piece of coal? That's what you need to work out. And then get a timer and then get a little dropper that just drops a piece of coal out when it's finished. So for the moment, I'm just going to go ahead and drop one out. Good stuff. And we're going to go ahead and see just what's in this mana pool in the center there. Not a great deal. There's a, uh, it's getting less and less in this one, which is good, which is good. I think I might might need some more hydro in, uh, hydro engines. Um, in look at this, I love it. I love the way that the power system works in Britannia. It's fantastic. It's absolutely fantastic. All right, guys. So with that done, we can now uh, we can now work on mana diamonds. 
Alright guys, it's the next stage within Batania right now, and that is the Runic Altar. Now, there is something that I want to do, and I've gone ahead and I've made one more mana spreader, uh, because I'm going to need that. Now, this is probably going to be a temporary setup, because I want to have the Runic Altar look particularly decent, and I can't really do that with this being here. I know I've just put it there, but I can't really do that with it being there. Oh, I need a diamond as well. Because I can get a mana diamond now, which is fantastic. Let's go and grab one. Great stuff. And then go back and make this into a mana diamond. I've been able to do one for a long time, apparently. There we go. Mana diamond. Fantastic. Right. Um, that's actually used. How much has it used? I don't think it's actually used a great deal. No, it hasn't. <laughs> it hasn't actually used a great deal, guys. So, yeah, I've been able to do it for such a long time, and I've been waiting for so long to carry on with Batania, because I need this to be able to carry on. Living Rock around a Mana Diamond will get a Runic Altar. Now I'm actually going to use this Living Rock and maybe some of that Smooth Stone to build a little bit of a temporary place um, for this Runic Altar to go, just so I can show you guys exactly what this mod can do, uh, exactly what this block can do. I'm going to put that right there, actually. I'm going to put that right down there. And right over here, and I say right over here, I want to keep it within range. Can I just do this and tell it to point this way? I can. But I'd rather have it so that it's pointing up to there. So I can see where it runs out. Okay, it runs out there. Fantastic. That's, that's good. That's what I want to see. Um... Which basically means as soon as it hits that point, it's going to get diminished returns. I'm going to get less and less mana when it gets to this point. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is just go ahead and slap that right there. And I should be able to just go bang. Have that aim at that. And it'll go ahead and do its biz. You can see it's actually still got that selected. I shall go and not select that. And apparently, when this receives enough mana so that it can actually make runes, what will happen is some lightning will come out and do all sorts of business, and, uh, and it'll be ledge. So, I'm going to wait for that to happen. I'm going to go ahead and make myself some stone steps or something like that. Just as a, like I said, it's going to be um, a temporary setup, guys. I am going to do something a little bit different for it, so don't worry. I will be. Oh, I need a bit more, actually. I need a little bit more, I've got to say. Let's pop that into there, pop that into there. I just need one more to be able to get myself... Oh, no, because I actually need six to get myself more stone bricks. Either which way, like I said, that's, that's for another time. Tidying things up, making things look good is for other videos, guys. For now, however... That will have to do nicely. So this runic altar then, what can it do? Let's go ahead and shift right click on there. Runic creation is a rather important complex in the advancement of the botanical magics. First and foremost though, this type of crafting requires a decent knowledge of mana manipulation. Before proceeding further, I read through the most important entries, those in italics, on that section of the Lexica Britannia might prove enlightening. We've already done the, you know, the majority of moving mana around. Apart from, of course, uh, mana tablets, but that's another thing entirely. Runes are extremely important components of more complex magical devices, or flora. In order to create these, one would require a runic altar, of which I've got. To utilise this runic altar, start by placing, via either a right click or simply tossing, the components to the rune you want to create. Proceeding by linking a mana spreader to the altar and right click it with a wand of the forest, uh, and then, you, you know, good stuff will happen. It should be apparent when the altar has received enough mana. When that happens, just drop a piece of living rock on top of it. And use the wand on it again to collect your rune. Runic altar, is that how you craft that one? A total of 16 runes exist. The most basic are elementary runes, uh, and elementary runes are named the, after the four elements. The intermediate runes are named after the four seasons, and the most advanced runes are named after the seven deadly sins. A separate rune of mana also exists. 
Sneaking and right-clicking the runic altar with an empty hand will, while it's not accepting mana, will remove the last item put into it. Last but not least, attaching a comparator to it will limit a signal strength 1 if the altar is accepting mana, and a signal strength 2 if it's ready to craft the rune. Okay. So three mana steel ingots, which is something that we're going to have to have a look into. Um, fishing rod, sugar canes, and bone meal will get a rune of water. Now, I take a look at it, guys. If I look at this, a one-to-one -one ratio. In other words, it uses a tiny little bit of mana when I put an iron ingot in. If you were to put ten iron ingots in, this is what the ratio would be. Okay? So you can see just how much it will actually use. Um, no, what am I on about? Ten. Yeah, no, that should be fine. That's to get the rune of water. Now, let me go ahead and sleep and show you guys exactly what I want to go ahead for in Britannia next. Alright guys, so I've sat and I've thought about what I want to create first within Batania using that runic altar from what I just created uh, a little bit earlier on. And I want to make something. I want to make the Sojourner's Sash. Or Sujourn Sojourner's, Sojourner's Journey, the, just this sash. This is what I want to make, guys. Four pieces of leather, a mana steel ingot, a rune of air, and a rune of earth. So let's go ahead and start creating the runes of earth. Now, actually, hang on a minute. Have I got enough leather? <coughs> don't know what I've got. Uh, it appears not. I'm going to have to go and kill some cows. Um, but I'll do that. I'll do that a little bit later. I want to go through uh, going and creating this bits and bobs. I know there's some cows over there, so I, I really don't need to worry about that too much. Um, in fact, it's probably wise, actually, to bring them over and maybe get a bit of a pen set up. I might do that in between episodes, actually. Um... Just kill cows for now, and then in between episodes, I'll get over some cows. Either which, anyway, let's get on with this. I need, oh god, I need iron. I need to go back, I need to get some iron. I don't think I've actually got that much iron left in terms of stuffs. Oh, I've got nine, I've got nine in there. I'm gonna have to go and create it this way, though, unfortunately. Um, so I'll wait for that to actually go up. I should have enough iron here. To be able to make the stuff I want to make. So if we have a look, I'm going to make the Rune of Earth first. I need three mana steel, one smooth stone, one block of coal, and a mushroom. Do I have a mushroom? If I do, it's probably in one of these chests. Yes, there it is. Um, I also need a block of coal. Easily done done. A uh, block of smooth stone. So that's that. That and that. I need the mana steel now. I'm going to go ahead and just grab that. I need to create the mana steel. And the way to make mana steel, guys, if you don't know, shift and click, look. A block of iron or just an iron ingot in a mana pool will get you a either a block of mana steel if you put iron in there or just a normal uh, iron uh, mana steel ingot. So let's go over to the big mana pool, the central hub of it all, this thing here, and start making some mana steel. And you can see, it's hardly made much of a dint into that. I'm going to go ahead and start popping some of the stuff into here. Look at how awesome that looks, guys. It looks fantastic. I love it. Smooth stone. Block of coal and a shroom. I'm pretty sure... That is the recipe. Let's go ahead and click that. Oh, there we go. Did you hear that, guys? Did you hear that? There's the mana getting sucked towards this. I've proven lightning. Proceed to link the spreader. It's apparent. Just drop a piece of living rock on top of it. What am I doing? Now I can do it. Can I? Well, I've dropped a piece of living rock on top of it. Hang on a second, let me grab that back off. I think I've got to do this first, haven't I? I've got to wait for it to actually get all the mana first. Yeah, when it's received enough mana. When that happens, just drop a piece of... Whoa! Wow! Hold up. Hold up. Is that is that enough mana, or what's going on? Why have I just lagged all of a sudden? Come on! You can do it. Is that it? Is that is that it? Seriously? 
Wow, I've really just suddenly got a massive lag spike for absolutely nothing. I will be right back, guys. Well, as you can possibly see in front of us, guys, lightning has beginning to strike here. Um, I do apologize if I can get some lag. I really don't know where that's coming from at the moment. I've just chucked that on top of there. Let's go ahead and whack this with the Wonder of the Forest once again. Et voila! Earth runes. I, I can also do the same now with... Um, what was the other thing I needed for the Sujana sta Sash? Let's go into here. Sujana's Sash. Where are you? You're there. The other thing that I actually needed was Rune of Air. And for that, I'm going to need, again, three mana steel, a carpet, a feather, and a string. And I'm also going to need to find out what the hell is wrong with my FPS. Okay, I'm not quite sure if that sorted it or not. Possibly not by the looks of things and what's just gone on there, guys. Um, either which way, I've now got inside there some stuff to go ahead and make a water rune. Um, actually, has it actually sorted it out? I think it has. Get started something out. I don't know what happened there. I just had a noise and then suddenly 5 FPS. I don't know, guys. Maybe it's... Look, it's doing it again. What was... Why? Why? Why are you doing this? Why you do this to me? I don't know. Anyways, you've already seen this kind of process on how to make runes. I'm gonna... I've gone ahead and done that now. I'm just waiting for all the mana to collect inside there. And I will be back when I've got all of the stuff to go ahead and make myself the Sojourner's Sash. Oh, it's gone back to normal. The Sojourner's Sash. I shall be back when I've got the water essence uh, rune thing. Alright guys, take number two. We've got the water rune now to go for. Bash. There we go. Water rune. Oh, no, runes of air, not water. What am I about? So we've got the air rune. We have a mana steel ingot. I went to get ahead whilst that was doing that and I waited for some uh, cows. Oh, crying out loud. What is going on with this? I have no idea. Stop it. I have no idea why it's doing this. I have no idea why it's doing this, guys. Anyway, what I'm going to go, go ahead and do is... I think I'm really near the end of the episode anyway. Come on. Come on. You can do it. Why is it doing this? I've got the leather I needed. And I've also got the mana steel, the rune of earth, and um, the rune of air. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do this little bit and bob and get this crafted now. Um, and hopefully, by the end of this episode, I might actually show you what it does without... Crashing like mad. I don't know what the heck is going on here Okay guys, I've restarted everything and I believe it is a problem with fraps somewhere along the line It just doesn't like itself and it's like no, I'm not having it anymore and decides to die um, So I, I think I fixed it. I, I don't know. I, I just all I did was restart everything so and it works now So I'm not gonna complain. Let me go ahead. We need a rune of earth and last but not least a rune of air a Sojourner's sash Oh man, yes, this is ledge. This is ledge. Can I chuck it on the ground and then go like that? No, I can't. I can't. Anyway, let's go and have a look at it then. In this particular place. Uh, Sujana's Sash. Traversing terrain sometimes proves to be a hassle, especially when you've got to go out and keep tapping your nodes. The Sujana's Sash can be equipped in the belt slot. And when worn, will increase the movement speed, jump height, and resistance to fall damage of the wearer. Lastly, if not sneaking, it allows the wearer to walk over one block high gaps without jumping with ease. Fantastic. Sujana's, Sujana's sash is right there, guys. It's an odd dictionary recipe, apparently. Which is interesting. So, baubles it is. And it goes in the belt slot. Oh man, look at this, look at this. Oh, it's all fast, it's all fast. There's the, there's the jump height. There is a bigger one, uh, not a bigger one, there is a better one. Uh, if we go on into here, see if I can find it really quickly before we end this episode. Sash. I'm pretty positive there was, or at least I, I remember covering one. I'm pretty sure I covered a, a better one. Might not be called a sash. Might be called something totally different. Um, hmm. I don't know. Maybe I just can't find it. Maybe I just can't find it. Ooh. 
I haven't actually done that yet. I really want to get some floating flowers for outside of uh, of there. Can I do that actually? Pasture seeds. I forget what, what they are now. Grass inside that. Okay. I might be able to actually go ahead and do that before the end of this episode. Just to make things look a bit decent. So, two of them will do quite nicely for this. Let me... Oh, I'm jumping again. Look, I don't need to jump. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, got that. Go on, stop it. Stop it now. Maybe it doesn't like something. Maybe it just doesn't like something. Okay, guys, I'm going to go ahead and craft myself a couple of these things right now. Um, is that not how you do it? I could swear that was how you did it. Or have I got to do it in a particular thing? Pasture seed. Dirt. Oh, glimmering flower. Okay. A glimmering... I need glowstone, so I can't do it. Which is a damn shame. But at least it will allow me to find out what the heck is going on with my FPS and something it doesn't like over there. Because as soon as I start recording... It doesn't do it when I'm not recording. I'm sure it's got something to do with fraps. I'm just not... Qu I, I can't pinpoint what it is. Anyway, guys, that's not your problem. That's my problem. I hope you're enjoying this series, uh, even with its issues that I'm having at the moment. Um, a, a bit more on Britannia there for you guys. I hope that, you know, I, I want to get into Britannia a lot more. There are some things that I want to do in Britannia that you can't really do in, in, in Thorncraft. Uh, one of them is the... Oh, that pickaxe, man. I want to get that pickaxe. I certainly want to get that pickaxe. But anyway, that's for a future episode. If you've enjoyed it, please go ahead and leave a like on this video. And uh, until next time, guys, I've been the Softman. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, stay safe.